Hey y'all, before we get started, make sure to hit that thumbs up. Hit that button right there. That it's some it, it it's somewhere over there. Just hit it and hit the subscribe button and then hit that little bell. That little ding-a-ling thing right there. Ding. Hit that. You get notifications of all these little discussions, all the reviews, everything we've got going on. Make sure to hit that button. So, give me a thumbs up. Um Try not to hit that thumbs down, but if you hit the thumbs down, that's okay. I appreciate you either way. But hit the thumbs up, subscribe, do all that stuff. Let's go. What's up, y'all? So I just want to talk about league bowling. Uh, we're going to talk about the business side of bowling because I think there's a lot of misunderstandings on why like places like Bolero do what they do, you know, like why does Bolero shut down leagues? Why does Bolero, you know, not have too many tournaments on weekends and stuff? And, you know, I think it's a lot of misconception, uh, misunderstanding as why they do the things they do. Um, so one thing that people always complain about with Bolero is, you know, they're getting rid of leagues. And they don't understand why, because people still have the mindset that leagues are there as guaranteed money for however many weeks, which is true. Um, and I do understand that side of the argument for it. However, what people aren't understanding is most centers, most good centers, are not getting rid of leagues uh, like Monday through Thursday. They're getting rid of leagues on Fridays and Saturdays, and probably Sundays as well, during prime time. Um, I have heard instances where Bolero has came and bought a center and got rid of all leagues and just turned it into a strictly open play center. I don't agree with that model. I don't think any center, you know, unless you're, you know, someplace in a very highly populated area where you could get away with that, um, you know, like a place like in Fishers, uh, right next to Indianapolis, you have Pinheads, which is one of the most gorgeous facilities you'll ever see. He could probably go strictly open play and get it done. He doesn't because he's a bowler. So he still has leagues throughout certain nights. But when you go in there, pretty much all times of all year, that place is busy. Uh, the game room he has is ridiculous. The restaurant he put in there is ridiculous. Everything is just so good. The bar area... That place is just a, it's the family fun center that everybody should strive to be. And it's very difficult for people to understand why that's more successful than traditional league bowling type bowling centers. Because the game has just changed so much. Not necessarily the game, but just the way it's perceived and the way money is being made in centers. Back in the day, uh, let's call it the 80s, set between seven, the 70s, 80s, and early 90s, you had leagues out the wazoo. You couldn't get, you couldn't open bowl because there were double and triple shifts of leagues every single day of the week. You had people bowling three, four nights a week, and that bowling center was full with leagues every night of the week. You don't have that anymore, and I think there's a couple of reasons why. I think one of the major reasons why is because those bowlers that were bowling in those types of leagues in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, those bowlers now are pretty much not bowling anymore. If they are, they're only bowling one night a week, uh, or they're, and now they're probably choosing the senior leagues in the mornings instead. So a lot of those action-packed leagues at night are dwindling because a lot of the big league bowlers that there were are no longer bowling. And we're not generating league bowlers out of our youth because they've done such a good job with junior gold and tournaments and all that stuff that these kids are just simply trying to make scholarship money and bowl and in tough com tough conditions, tough competition. They're trying to get ready for Junior Gold because that is their Super Bowl. Junior Gold is their Super Bowl of the year. You know, you get to go bowl with 5,000 kids or however many it is. It's a ridiculous number that they're pulling off on this, and they get to go and, you know, bowl this event and try to make Team Junior Team USA, which is a dream come true for these kids, plus scholarship money and everything else. So... You know, same thing with like Team Masters. You got Team Masters where they give them just the one bowling ball. You got to go out there and you do the best you can. You know, so they're looking forward to these types of events. All the Junior Gold qualifiers throughout uh, the year that they have where you can win scholarship money every single event you bowl. These kids are bowling all of this stuff. So they're not bowling the youth leagues. Youth leagues have dwindled. Why has youth league dwindled? Well, because of the new model. Because 
uh, BPAA is basically teaching bowling centers that these owners should be managing their centers, that they don't need to pay a manager, and with that comes you don't need to pay a youth director because the youth directors were the important people when it came to youth leagues. These people were the ones that went to the schools, dropped off flyers, you know, uh, had booths set up for parents to sign their kids up for these activities. They're no longer doing those types of things. So most places, youth leagues have pretty much just died. Uh, the places that are thriving are the places that continue to push these people, these kids, these parents to getting into these leagues, and they're doing okay. Because um, I remember where I came from up in northern Gaylord, Michigan, they, uh, they had a youth director, Roberta Green, who, you know, rest her soul, she passed away quite a few years ago now, but you know she was the one that constantly had you know flyers and everything put out to the schools. Um, and it wasn't just flyers at the schools. I mean, they, they had it set up to where you had to come sign up for these leagues in person uh, at the bowling center, and these leagues filled. Like when I was a kid bowling the youth leagues, we had, you know, it was two or three shifts of youth leagues on Saturday mornings. Um, and they were full. I mean, they pretty much. They started to dwindle in near the end. When I got into high school bowling and stuff is when, you know, the youth leagues weren't as big as what they were, but they were still around. Uh, and by the time I was in the middle of high school, uh, they pretty much got rid of the youth director and everything, and, and they no longer went in that direction. So it's just a, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a complicated situation that uh, the centers just started to move in a different direction. And the reason why it's the correct direction is because of uh, the, the amount of money you can make recreationally versus league. So let's break it down with a little bit of math. Let's just say... The, uh, the average league night, you're paying $20, and um, $12 is for lineage. Each table, let's call it even three buckets of beer. Most places, a bucket of beer, about 20 bucks after tip. Everybody gets a beer, so you're having maybe three buckets of beer, of beer throughout the night. Let's call that average. You're going to have some tables that only do one. You're going to have some that do none. So it averages out to about three per... Uh, per lane. So you've got $60 in beer, maybe a little food, let's call it maybe $40 in food, so $100 plus the $20 per man um, for the league. Even, we'll even add in the, the, the money that's for the prize fund. We'll just add it. We'll just call it straight up $20. So $100 there. So let's call it $200 per lane for three hours. So even if you have uh, a 24 lane center, you're only getting $200 a lane for three hours of these people being in there. And what are they doing while they're there? Usually they're complaining about the pattern. They're upset about conditions. They're upset about it's too warm or it's too cold or, you know, something. There, there's always something that league bowlers are complaining about. Now, on the flip side, you got rec bowlers that come in. And the companies that are doing it the right way are doing package deals where you get an hour of bowling and you get a pizza you know, in a pitcher of beer for like 99 bucks. And you can have up to six people on the lane. So you get um, the $99 for those things. And then most times they're spending money outside of that as well. So let's say they spend an additional 20 or $30 on that. So let's call it $130 a lane per hour. Now that's almost $400 per lane for those three hours. You're doubling your income. So $400 versus $200 in those three hours that's that's going on, it's it's a no-brainer. You're doubling the income that you're bringing in pretty simply and easily. And I'm low-balling this. Like, I'm making it. In in real in reality, most times the, it's closer to like $150 a lane per three hours for the league and probably about $450 for every three hours. So it's usually about $300 more. Um, on average. And that's the way the math was when I was running bowling centers. Um, so we made sure that Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, the, after 5 p.m., there were no leagues. And we made sure to move those leagues. If they didn't want to bowl, then they didn't have to bowl. Uh, and we could move them to a different night or they just moved to a different center. But those Fridays, Saturdays, and sure, you're going to say, well, the open play is not guaranteed. You're right, it's not. But all it takes is one good open play night where you're getting, you know, six hours of solid open play to where you're having enough revenue there to make up for 
you know, an entire month of league. So one night of good open play makes up for an entire month of league. You know, so that's where the math comes in. And that's why people are deciding that, you know, I'll take my chances of having a couple of days where there's no open play and we're really not making any money because the days when we are, we're making more money than what that league can bring in in four weeks. You know, so I personally think that it needs to be a good balance of both. I think you need to have your leagues Monday through Thursday, any time of the day or night. Um, you can um, do whatever you want there. Try to build them. Try to do as much as you can to build those leagues up and have those because those are the guaranteed money. Those are good money. And then if you have open play afterwards, that's just bonus. But Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, you keep open for open play. So I'm not in agreement to getting rid of leagues altogether, but I am in agreement of getting rid of leagues on weekends. Um, and that makes it tough to run tournaments on weekends too. So for tournament bowlers, and I'm a tournament bowler, obviously, it's tough to run tournaments in prime time, you know, days. In the summertime, maybe it's a little bit easier because you're coming in, you're doing the tournament in the morning, open play still open at night. They're not too concerned with it. People aren't going open bowling at 8 o'clock in the morning, usually. It's pretty tough, especially on the weekends. Usually the weekends, they're going out, they're playing golf, they're going out on the boat, they're doing whatever they do during the day, looking for something to do at night to cool off, go inside out of the air, into the air conditioning, go play some bowling, you know, go have some fun, have a drink, get some food, that type of stuff. So get your tournaments in during the week or during the day and then have your open play at night. So I think we just need to be a little bit more open-minded with why these centers are doing what they're doing. Now, my issue with Bolero and a lot of their centers is they do hire a lot of people that know nothing about bowling. And unfortunately, we're in a situation now with where nobody wants to work that you've pretty much got to hire what you can hire. I mean, you're never you're not going to get bowlers in there anymore very often. You know, so there needs to be some training that makes people understand bowling a little bit better. I think that's a good way to help the sport um, because there's way too many. I mean. Walter Ray or Pete Weber or somebody of, you know, of a massive name that's been around for decades, they shouldn't be able to walk into a bowling center and have anybody that works there not know who they are. It's unfortunate because that's just how it goes. But it, that, I mean, it's true. They can walk into most centers and most of those people are just not going to know who they are. That's the bad part. Um, but the good part is, is at least you've got people working at the centers. You've got to have people working. So uh, I know like at Waterford Lanes, we've, you know, they've been trying to hire people for a while now and it's been a struggle getting people to work because of you know everything that's going on um after getting all that free money whatever it may be nobody wanted to actually get a job and get paid so they want to continue to sit on their butts and you know do nothing and collect off the government as much as they possibly can which is whatever I'm not here to judge anybody's situation we don't know what everybody's actually in but it is very difficult to hire people right now you know, and when it comes to management, the, you know, I took the job at Turbo um, back in 2016, while I also had a job offer to manage a center in Saginaw, um, and they paid similar, which was pretty much nothing. <laughs> no offense to Turbo, but um, the, the the job description that I had and the, the amount of time away from home and all that, it just, it was not worth that kind of money. So... Uh, what I'm doing now is obviously a lot better, a little bit more convenient. The things that I need to do are, um, for the, for the money, it's a lot better. And, you know, with this channel, I kind of have my own, I can create my own destiny with as much money as I want to make. I can make videos every day and these do generate some type of revenue. So, um, but that center didn't want to pay very well. And that's a lot of work to manage a bowling center to get, because you're constantly trying to bring people into leagues. You're constantly trying to bring new bowlers in. You know, you're trying to advertise to the rec bowlers and make sure people are coming in and giving them a reason to come in. New events, new things all the time, managing your employees. Like, there's a lot of work that goes into managing a bowling center. Um, so I'm really glad I went the direction I did um, with Turbo rather than managing that center and staying in Saginaw. Um, and also when I countered their offer, they weren't too happy with my counter because I was not going to settle for, you know, the 42,000 or whatever it was that they wanted to pay to manage a center. Cause you got to work 70, 80 hours a week to do it the right way. And you're filling in for shifts and you got to run everything. Basically. It's just, it's not, it's not worth that kind of money to you. They, and that's the problem is most of these centers, they don't want to pay a good manager. 
you should be paying a good manager no no more no more no less than seventy five thousand dollars a year, uh, and that's just bare minimum. You know, and honestly, the the bowling centers management, the people who bring in recreational bowling, open play, they manage all that stuff and still keep leagues involved. That's a six figure job easily, um, because these centers, if done right, can make an awful lot of money. They can they can make a ton of money doing it the right ways. But again, it takes putting money back into the center. So if you have a traditional looking bowling center and you just have a couple of pinball machines and stuff, you're probably not going to appeal the open play very much. So you're going to have to make some changes and do some things to really attract it. Now, the problem is, is most of these places, they just don't have the money. They don't have the capital to put into making adjustments to making um, changes. You know, like Waterford Lanes is a great example of a center that does it really well. They've got an entire room dedicated to kids. They got a game room and then they got bounce houses back there. They got five different giant bounce houses back there that um, people are just, you know, they bring their kids in so that way they can just run around, burn some energy and all that. And then they can go bowling and then there's, you know, the food. And uh, the one thing I'd like to see more of a restaurant type situation in Waterford, but I don't know the I don't know the area well enough to know if a restaurant would work or not, you know, so they may be doing the right thing just by having the snack bar, but, um, the bar itself is pretty huge. So they've got a lot going for them there and they have the golf simulator and, you know, stuff like that too. The banquet center right next door that they do a bunch of weddings and everything in. So they've got a lot going for them there and they do it right. They get, they get, and they get their leagues, um, and then they have their open play at night. So it's just something to think about. So the next time you're mad that, Bolero buys up a center and you think they're going to just get rid of leagues. I, I get it. I understand why you're frustrated. Um, the Rockford, not Rockford, the uh, Wichita one, um, the Wichita center that was just bought. Um, they just, you know, they've got a tradition. They've got their pizza. They've got all kinds of stuff that's been successful there for a while. And people are worried that they're going to tear it all down and, and not, um, keep things the way it is. And I understand that. Um, I hope they keep it fairly similar and they don't, you know, turn it into a typical Bolero like they do any other center um, and raise all the prices and stuff. But again, the raised prices thing is a whole nother discussion. Why wouldn't they raise their prices? Because the open play bowlers are going to pay it. You know, it's just like going to a carnival and stuff. You're going to pay the $6 for a beer going to a, a baseball game. You're going to pay $12 for a beer because it's convenient. It's right there. And you're going to pay it. And that's, you know, if you're not going to, then you're not going to. That's fine. But the people, more, the majority of people are going to pay it because they want to eat, they want to have a drink, and they want to do those types of things. So all these people fighting, oh, well, beer should never be more than 250 and I, I'm not paying more than $5 for an order of cheese sticks. Like, it, I understand because that's the way it used to be. It's just not the way it is now. So I think we just need to open our minds and understand that the way centers are being ran now is different. And it's not necessarily bad for competitive bowling. I think competitive bowling is what's bringing a lot of these leagues down. I think a lot of these leagues are going away because there's more tournaments. There's more things to bowl outside of league. I haven't bowled a league in years. And it's simply because, A, I don't enjoy them anymore because everybody makes them about money. I don't want to bowl league for money. I want to bowl league where I can just go hang out with a couple of guys, have a drink, and you know just have fun. But unfortunately, every league that you, you, I, have, I would even consider bowling they won't let me bowl because I have a card or because everybody knows me and they think I'm too good. And little do they know I'm your typical 220 average league bowler, you know? So yeah, sure. I'll have a good night, pop off some honor scores here and there, but I'm not going to average 250. You know, it's just not going to happen. I'm not very good in the league conditions. Um, I leave a lot of flat tens. So that's just how it goes. That's just the way it is. So anyway, I'm rambling on now, but I just wanted to talk about this because it's a big discussion that's been going on. Um, with, with you know, a lot of Bolero acquisitions and people being upset with centers that are moving in these directions. I just wanted to explain why they move in these directions instead of, you know, jumping on this bandwagon of saying, oh, F them and F that and, you know, whatever it may be. Let's, uh, let's try to be a little bit more understanding of business is business. We're trying to make money just like everybody else. It's just like with me, with my channel and my shop and all that. Like, I'm, yes, I love the game. But I'm not going to give product away just because I love the game. Yes, I love bowling, but I'm not going to give lessons away just because I love bowling. Like, I mean, I'll do what I can uh, when I can, but I'm still in this as a business. It's still a business. It's still, you know, the opportunity for me to make a living. And for me to make a living, you know, I need the customer support and I need 
you know, your guys' support watching the channel and everything. So I do appreciate you all. Um, and I am going to get out of here. So uh, I'm actually going to go. I'm going to go get some fishing done. I'm going to drop the boat in the water and go do some fishing tonight before I take off for Columbus tomorrow. We, tomorrow we start uh, qualifying tomorrow afternoon on Bowling B Squad for the uh, the $12,000 event that Jody Boyd is running. Um, and that's a whole other discussion. House shots versus tournament shots for big money. What should we be doing? So, But we'll talk about that at a different time. So I'm out of here. We will see you guys next time.